Over the years, people have asked me many times, what happened to your headstock? How do you tune this guitar? And how is the neck profile on the Strandberg? In this video, I want to tell you all about my Strandberg Bowden Proc 7 and answer some of the common questions anyone might have about this frankly strange looking guitar. Before we go in, this video was not sponsored by anyone other than my lovely supporters over on Patreon, so my opinion is entirely my own, and I will tell you both the good and the bad. This way, I hope to give you some insight into what makes this guitar special for me, and how it became my go-to workhorse. So, one of the most prominent features of this guitar is obviously the fact that it has strings. And then there's the clear lack of a headstock. Now, this design choice is not just made to look eccentric, but it's actually a crucial part of the Strandberg philosophy. Strandberg focuses on ergonomics and playability. And to truly understand this, it's helpful to compare this guitar to my older guitars. Because of its missing headstock, the guitar is first of all less heavy. Now, the Strandberg comes in at around two and a half kilograms. And if we compare that to my Les Paul Studio, that's about half its weight. Bear in mind that if you play a guitar like that every day, for multiple hours, that's definitely gonna have an impact on your body. In my own experience, when I used to perform almost daily, my neck and shoulders definitely didn't like that. On top of that, the weight of the Strandberg is balanced, meaning it doesn't tilt towards the headstock nor the butt of the guitar. This is especially nice when playing standing up, but also while sitting down, it just feels more comfortable, especially with the different positions in which the Strandberg can be played. Okay, but without a headstock, we don't have the tuning pegs in their original place. And I hear you say, how are we able to tune the guitar then? How are you able to tune the guitar then? Well, what's left of the headstock actually holds the strings in place through a system of screws. The strings are pulled through underneath the screws with the screws tightened on top of them to keep them in place. This prevents the strings from slipping out and slapping you in the face mid-performance. The tuning system itself is placed on the bridge, where you have a straightforward turning system. Clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to release. A nice perk of its position is that the string goes through straight, which supposedly helps them last longer, or at least reduces the risk of them snapping. Lastly, Strandberg has a patented ender neck, which is a trapezoid-shaped neck profile unique to Strandberg guitars. The nice thing about this neck profile is that your thumb quite naturally follows the flat side of the trapezoid, this means your thumb will be resting underneath the lower, thicker strings while playing on the lower end of the guitar, while resting up near the thinner strings the more you ascend the fretboard towards the higher frets. The seventh string was probably the biggest change I had to get used to. Although it offers for a lot of fun new venues to explore, the addition of a seventh string means the neck is a bit thicker. Along with the trapezoid-shaped neck, I found that playing simple bar chords is more uncomfortable. The neck is just too thick for me, and my hands get exhausted faster, which potentially leads to wrist injuries. In scenarios where I have to play a lot of bar chords, I tend to feel more comfortable on my Strat's thinner neck or that of the Gibson. This is really about discovering your own preferences and then using the right tool for the job. In this case, the Strandberg hasn't been ideal. That being said, it's probably near impossible to find a one-size-fits-all guitar for all jobs. For most material, I do gravitate towards using the Strandberg, and that seven string is really fun to have. Of course, I also have my signature wave pick on the guitar itself. If you've made it through the video this far, be sure to leave a comment to let me know your theory as to why it's on there. Some other features of the Strandberg, like its slanted frets, lead to easier, probably faster playability. Although, I personally haven't found a big difference. The frets aren't slanted enough for me to even really notice them. Then there's also the floating bridge system and the active pickups, which I hadn't had in any of my previous guitars, so I was excited to try them out. These features aren't particularly unique to Strandberg guitars, but I always find it incredibly fun to mess around with the new approaches, and so those were an easy pick. No pun intended. This is, I think, what's so important. Whether you play a Strandberg or any other guitar or instrument, have it be something that inspires you and excites you to play. And all aspects of the instrument matter in this, from its features to its playability and the way it looks. All in all, I really love this guitar and I've been playing it for a good three and a half years. Of course, there's a whole lot more that could be said about it. I'll leave a list with detailed specs in the description for those guitar nerds out there that want to know about the types of wood used and so forth. I hope you got something new out of the video. Do let me know in the comments what your favorite guitar is, as I always love to see a good discussion. I've also opened up new student slots, so if you want me to help you take your music to the next level, reach out through any of my socials. I'll also post a link to my website with more information in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.